First, I want to thank you for your time, Ben. The person that I do want to cover is Brandon Ayuk, extremely talented athlete, 25th overall pick with the 49ers, six foot, 205 pounds. If you can start off by giving me a little bit of a review under you at Sierra College, and then we can start from there. Sure. So I had him in junior college at Sierra College uh, for two years. His freshman year, he was an all league performer. He didn't start till about game four, but then he just went. He, he was like really special. We knew that at the time. Um, in the last game of the year, he actually started both ways to give you the type of athlete he is, give you an idea what kind of athlete he is. Uh -huh. He started at corner and played every snap at corner and then played every snap at wide receiver too in his final game. And he gave up one catch that game and scored two touchdowns receiving over 100 yards receiving. So that was the end of his freshman year and he made all yeah. leagues. Um, and then he had a great off season. He's a grinder. He's a worker. He just like he works hard. Oh yeah. He, his work ethics off the charts, but his ability is incredible too. And we'll get to the character part later. But, um, so they, he had a great off season, came back and was an all American for us his sophomore year. Um, sophomore year, just numbers off the charts, punt returns, kick returns, you know, just, just everything, just an all purpose kind of guy that fits really well with the type of scheme Kyle Shanahan likes. I mean, it, it's hard to compare him to anyone who's had success in the NFL because he hasn't had success in the NFL yet, right? And I've been coaching 20 years, and I don't – I'm just going to throw around, oh, Brandon's going to be an all-pro. You know, he's got the potential to do that. But he's very similar to, like, Debo Samuel. Um, he's very similar to, like, Steve Smith was, uh, you know, for the Panthers in the past. He's that type of, of – receiver that turns into a running back with the ball in his hand so the yards after the catch are going to be tremendous that's what we, um, that's what we want mm -hmm. yeah Niners. I'm a huge Niners fan I've been since the moment I was born so mm -hmm. me too go Niners <laughs> yeah watch it at my grandma's in the double wide you know back in the days you know Niners all the way and then my cousin you know she, she was adopted but she went for the Cowboys just to piss everybody off Ugh, it's the Cowboys with the Raiders. It's just like it's like split with my family. There's the Raiders and then there's the 49ers. We still love her. I'm just kidding. But my grandma made her sit out on the porch during one of the playoff games with Niners versus the Cowboys because she got that. I don't blame her. <laughs> um, okay, so on to the next question. What does he need to work on to help him transition from college to pro? Like, well, I think, you know, I mean, junior college to the Pac-12 there's yeah. a big stepping stone. The Pac-12 or any, you know, major FBS program to the league is a huge stepping stone, right? Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that is really in Brandon's favor to overcome any adversity that he's going to have is that he by no means thinks he's arrived. Like when he got to us, he knew he was a grinder. He had a great freshman year, but it wasn't enough for him. He wanted to be like an All-American his sophomore. His junior year at Arizona State, same type of thing. He only started about half the games. Nikhil Harry was there. That was the big dog. And then he kind of filled into his shoes Yes. Um, in the bowl game when Nikhil Harry didn't play in that game. And then his mindset that offseason was to be great. You know, so um, there's not a lot of weaknesses to his game because he his mental approach is to get better every day. And I'll tell you what his strengths are for sure. And that's catch radius. He has a tremendous catch radius. I don't know if you read all the, the stats about him, but he had an 81-inch wingspan measured at the Combine at six foot when Calvin Johnson, Megatron, who was like 6'5", had an 82-inch wingspan. So his wingspan is that of like a 6'5 wide receiver. So his catch radius is tremendous. His body control to catch the ball in traffic when he's getting bumped around is insane. And then obviously the run after the catch is – is pretty special too so you combine all those things I, I mean I, I can remember going weeks in practice without him dropping a ball so the hands aren't an issue at all um, yes. and it just yeah so I guess I guess the biggest thing would just be adjusting to the speed of the game like any rookie has to yeah of course. Um, and I think that's I think when you get drafted in the first round the talent's always there it's the mental side of things of What's your approach? Is your approach like, I'm a badass, I've arrived? Or is your approach like, I'm a grind, I'm a work, no matter where I was drafted? And Brandon will, will take the second approach to that, and that's why I think he'll be successful.
I've been on top for a while. Now it's all cheaper to the moon. Fast car make room, room, room. Take it to the boom, boom, room. I'm a visionary. I got the niggas scared. Mm. Next question. Um, you started talking about his character a little bit, and I want to know more about his character. Like, what kind of teammate is he? Like, what is his locker room presence? And just overall, like, is his character as solid as his game? He really keeps to himself a lot. Um, and that's what I told my friend, uh, Coach Kacerik, the D-line coach for the 49ers. He and I coach together in Texas, and, and we're, we're pretty close friends. And I told him he's a lot like yourself where he's quiet, but he has that confidence. He has that presence about him that people are attracted to, that want to talk to him, that want to be around him. But he's, he, he, when he first gets into that culture with the 49ers, he'll be observing. He'll be really, you know, kind of Just more, observing yeah, more checking things out. He's not a rah rah guy. He doesn't talk a lot. Um, but once you get to know him, I mean, he's funny. He's got a great personality. But people are attracted to to being around him. Um, and it's probably just that kind of that quiet confidence that, you know, that, that's yeah. attracted to people that you just – he's not in there bragging and boasting about he did this or he did that. And he's not a guy that's going to be in the locker room running his mouth. Um, but he will also, like if someone challenges him in the locker room, like, I'm going to lock you down today in one-on-ones, -on -one, rookie, watch out. He's probably going to be like, all right, let's see, you know. Let's go. That's about as much as you'll get out of him, and then he'll probably go do well. Not only Brandon's physical ability that stands out, but also his character. That's pretty awesome. Um, next question. What's one thing that he doesn't get enough credit for that you can think of? Probably just because of all, you know, the explosiveness he's done with the ball in his hands is his downfield blocking. He takes it very serious. You know, that's not going to help anybody in fantasy. But, uh, you know, blocking is tremendous. Where it will actually help in fantasy is that he won't get taken off the field for not blocking. You know? <laughs> right? That's a plus. That yeah, is. exactly. He's going to make – his playing time will not be diminished because he doesn't block. So – no, he loved, that's probably part of his game. He gets the least amount of credit for it, and he loves doing it, and he's physical with it, and, he, and he's strong and low center of gravity. And if those DBs aren't careful, he'll put them up in the first round, first row of seats, you know. Yeah, the 49ers are definitely lucky to have Brandon at you, that's for sure. There's one more question after this. Um, can you tell me about a time his effort or play was criticized, and how did he respond to that if there was a situation? We didn't, we didn't have that, and I know it's like it's crazy to say in junior college because we, we do get a lot of immaturity at our level. Like, you know, in junior college, you get kids that need to develop either physically or mentally or both. There's a reason they're not going to the four-year level. And Brandon's was because his freshman and sophomore year of high school, he just struggled a little bit in the classroom and didn't qualify for Division One coming out of high school. But he, his grades were fine for us. His grades were really good junior, senior year of high school. He's just one of those guys that as a head coach in junior college, you're like, how the hell did I get this guy at junior college, right? Yeah. So, I, no, I, don't, I don't remember that because he just, he loved the practice. He loved the game. He's very emotional about the game, but it wasn't an emotional type of, if I'm not getting the ball, he'd blow up on the sideline. That, that never happened, you know. Even if he wasn't getting the amount of touches he wanted, sure, he, he would be frustrated, but it never was voiced. It never was. There was never anything that needed to be, address discipline wise i mean the closest thing it ever came to was actually you know it's a good story and i'll tell it to you but he um he was i took him off special okay uh, because i wanted i didn't want him doing punt returns anymore kickoff returns we were snapping the ball directly to him in wildcat like six times a game okay. we're throwing the ball to him another 10 to 12 times a game and we we're handing off sweeps to him like four to five times a game Okay. And then on kickoff returns and punt returns, he's, he's, you know, the body taking a lot of extra shots. So it was, it was game five of the year. And I told him, we're taking you off. Or I didn't tell him. That's what it was. I told his position, the special teams coaches, I said, take him off kickoff return, take him off punt return. So we went out to practice that day and he went out there and the coach took him off. And, and so for the next two days around the facility, he wouldn't even look at me. He wouldn't talk to me. He and we had a good relationship and we were passing each other in the hallway one day and finally I go, Hey, what is your problem? You know, and he looks me dead in the eye and he says, You took me off special. And I said, Yeah, and I told him all the reasons I just told to you. And he goes, and I said, Here's the deal. 
if the game's on the line, we'll put you back there. Okay. You know, yeah. he goes, coach, I can change the game on the first punt return. I can change the game on the first kickoff return. You know, he's like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. So I listened to him. I put him back out there. And this is no lie, Leslie. He touched the end zone five times that game, twice on receptions, long touchdown receptions. He had two punt returns of the house called back, but he still ended up with 110 yards of punt return. And he had a 76-yard kickoff return to the house that game. So he made his point. Was that the game that he gave you the game ball? Yeah, so that was a special game to me, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was my alma mater. We were playing at Santa Rosa Junior College, you know, North Bay. And I'm from, I am I played at Cardinal Newman, and I'm from Santa Rosa. Aww. And so, yeah, my mom had passed earlier that year, um, uh, about four or five months before that game. And so it was kind of a homecoming for me that we are all looking forward to. And when my mom passed, it was more of a support system of all family and friends that came to the game. We must have had 100 people there as the visitors just wow. for my family alone. And my mom's mom was sitting in the front row in a wheelchair, you know, my grandma. Like it was, it was an emotional day. I can only imagine. Uh, yeah, it was the most dominating junior college performance I'd ever seen. And at the end, you know, all the kids were aware of the emotions in the pregame. Like they knew, I, I, you know, I didn't by any means was, would ever use that as a motivating factor because I never even brought it up. But they knew what was going on, you know. Um, and how emotional I was and how much the game meant to me. And yeah, he, he ran up and, you know, said that, you know, that was for your mom. And a lot of the kids said that too. I don't want to just say Brandon was the only Brandon one. Was an he, but he was the guy. He was the MVP of the game clearly and ran up and, you know, yeah. presented that to me in that, in that way. And it, it meant a lot. It still, of course, means a lot to me. Such a special moment. It, it's definitely a game that you will never Okay, Coach Ben, last question. Would you happen to know if he has any pregame rituals? Like, does he eat pasta before a game? Or does he do some voodoo dancing? Or like, anything that you know of that you can share? That's a good question. You're going to have to ask him that yourself. That's a good question. I don't know. All right, Ben, those are all the questions that I have for you. Um, before I close, would do you want to add anything else? Oh, no, I, I, I just, uh, I'll be riding the Amtrak, you know, I'll be going to games, you know. Yelling, touchdown, Ayuk. And he steps up, gets rid of it, and picks up the first down. Ayuk, right after the catch. The well, Ben, it was a pleasure talking to you. Go Niners. It's definitely our year. West Again. To midfield.